With the ever-changing food scene, food and restaurants are becoming less generic and more complex. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's some order. I'm Ben Phillips, and this is Food in the Wall, a podcast where I hunt down the best local eateries in all of Omaha. On this podcast, I'll be going to Meatball, a local industrial eatery in Midtown Blackstone District. I'll sample some of the food there and sit down with so head chef no Matt Baum. Hi guys, I'm here at the Blackstone District in Midtown Omaha. We're at the Meatball. Come along and join us. Come along with me as we hunt down the food in the wall. So today I'm at the Blackstone District in Midtown Omaha, and we're going to have dinner at Meatball, an industrial eatery with a creative twist in its Italian-backed menu. I got a chance to sit down with Matt Baum, who's been Meatball's head chef since the restaurant opened. He explains where his ideas come from to build this menu from the ground up along with where he gets his inspiration from. My friend Phil and I actually had the idea for the place, and uh, we slowly put it together while we were on tour with a band for a while. So. Honestly, I, I, I'm informed by the things that I have eaten because I love food so much. And we just, everywhere we went, we would go to these like small immigrant neighborhoods and just eat everything. And I loved it. And then come back and desperately try to fake that weird dumpling they had or desperately try and remember how they did that Korean short rib or something, you know, and just keep doing it and doing it and doing it until you get it. And that's my favorite part about cooking. Meatball actually had an interesting history of how it came to be and how they decided on Omaha to start their business. I was playing drums in a band and uh, Phil was actually stage manager and everywhere we would go, we'd go to different restaurants and say to ourselves, we could do this at home. Why don't we do this? And uh, one of them was a meatball shop in New York that we both really liked. And I came from a cooking background. Whenever I wasn't playing music, I was cooking. And one of the things that I love is charcuterie and sausage making. And I thought to myself, you know, like this place is kicking ass. It's doing a great job. And their meatballs are good. I'm not talking, I'm not gonna talk smack about them or anything, but their meatballs are good. They weren't fantastic, you know what I mean? And with my knowledge of charcuterie and sausage, I decided, well, why don't we open a meatball place and I'll make meatballs instead of sausage? It's so much easier. You don't have to case them. You roll them into a ball. That's it. Boom, bang, you know? Omaha is a cheap place to live. And Omaha is one of the few cities where a small startup, a restaurant like us, could afford to get into a building, renovate it, and run a restaurant. You can't do that in Seattle. You can't do that in New York or Houston. You'd have to have major, huge financial backing for a place a quarter of the size of ours. So with all that out of the way, let's jump right into some food at the Blackstone Meatball. When I walked into meat, yeah. When I walked into Meatball, it wasn't that big of a restaurant. I came in for dinner at about 7 o'clock, and there weren't many people there. Just a couple groups eating dinner and a couple of guys at the bar. I was told by my waitress that I just missed the dinner rush. And it was also raining pretty hard that day, so maybe that didn't help either. The place in general, though, was pretty small. But I think I kind of added to the close-knit community feel that Meatball had that other restaurants didn't necessarily have. The first thing I ordered at the recommendation of my waitress was the special ball and special sauce in a bowl. They make a new special ball every two weeks, a special meatball. You get three, you get three of them in a in a bowl order, Um, and you also get to pick what goes underneath the meatballs. You have your option of getting something more traditional like spaghetti or, or or penne, or you can be like me and be more contemporary. I got waffle fries. Actually, it was pretty good. Matt explains. Uh, What goes into making the special ball, Uh, this one specifically? So this year we said, well, let's do a 
something ridiculous like a bacon cheeseburger bowl. How do we make a meatball taste like every part of a bacon cheeseburger? And we decided to take ground beef, season it just like you would a burger, add a little bit of uh, Worcestershire sauce, I ground bacon into it, cooked the bacon first, and then ground it with the meat into it. So it's in there. And then packed it with some cheddar cheese, and we garnish it with some cheddar cheese. So every bite you get, theoretically, tastes like an entire bacon cheeseburger ball. And of course, you put chili on it, you got a chili cheeseburger. Give me a break, you know? Fell in love with chili cheeseburgers in Buffalo, New York, on tour. I really did like the taste of the meatball. I was afraid, though, when you try to take all the ingredients of a cheeseburger, uh, that you might get some sort of weird taste because you have, you know, you have the burger, you have the bun, you have the cheese. Okay, I don't know what component of the cheeseburger you took out of that and put into the bowl, but I thought it was just going to be a weird mishmash of different flavors. But actually, it complemented well with the chili sauce. It was chili sauce. The cheese and the garnish also gave it a star for presentation. But although I wasn't really a fan of the kidney beans in the sauce, but it was a good combination with the taste of the meatball. The only recommendation I would be have the only recommendation I would have is that you should have less sauce and maybe add an additional meatball. So you have four meatballs. Personally, that's that's just how I like it because I love getting my hands on meat. I love eating as much meat as I can. <laughs> uh, next, I ordered an appetizer, and it was the fried mozzarella cheese balls. We wanted to do something along that lines, like some type of fried mozzarella thing, because one of the owners loves mozzarella cheese sticks. And I'm like, well, that is so cheese ball, no pun intended, that I don't want to do it. And when I said that, I was like, well, what if we did mozzarella cheese balls? So there's this type of mozzarella cheese called Siligiani or Siligini, right? I don't know if I'm saying it right. I'm German-Jewish. I don't know how to say this crap. So they're little mozzarella balls. So, and I started thinking to myself, well, what if we get those? We freeze them. We bread them. Of course, we hand bread them. We make our own breading. You make your own egg wash, and then we fry them. And it worked. And they loved it. And I was like, this is great. This works so well. And now I've probably made at least a quarter of a million of them. And every time I have to do it, I think about hurting myself. I'm a big fan of mozzarella sticks. I think the bite-sized pizzas were spot on when it came to proportion to the entree. I do like it that it's really gooey. It's really good. And I kind of like the friedness of, of it, the texture. It, but it's not going to fill you up. And that's not what it's supposed to do. Uh, it, it'll still save you some room for the big entree coming up. Finally, I had dessert. Pretty simple, I think. Uh, it's the fried cookie dough and vanilla ice cream, and it's basically that. My first sous chef, Jeanette, who's wonderful, she was like, well, why don't we take cookie dough, throw it in the damn fryer, and serve it with ice cream, and every stoner in Omaha is gonna come running for this, and she was absolutely right. It's delicious. There's really nothing to it, honestly. We make the cookie dough, we freeze it, we throw it in the fryer, we serve it with ice cream. It's absolutely delicious. And although, although it's a basic dessert to come up with, it's surprising how good the ice cream tastes. Almost like it's made in house. It tastes pretty homemade to me. And the fried cookie dough is also a bonus, uh, since I love anything with cookie dough, honestly. If you put cookie dough on anything, I will probably eat it, most likely. Part of what makes that food so good, in my opinion, is obtaining local product whenever they can. Okay, so we deal with lots of different producers, right? And we try to deal with as much locally as we can, but there's a reality there. And the reality is, come February, you're not going to find fresh spinach. So we deal with several different farms for our meat. Well, you can always get pork, you can always get beef, you can always get chicken, and it's great. Overall, I love the Blackstone Meatball. And also the feel and the vibe of it. It's a place for all occasions. You can get good food, good drinks. Yes, I'm 21. This restaurant works for all types of occasions. You want to come in for a quick bite. You want to stick around and talk to a neighbor or get to know someone new. But above all else, Meatball is known for their meatballs. And like it says on their website, the Blackstone's Meatball is not your mama's meatball. Well, that's all the time we had today for Food in the Wall. Special thanks to Matt Baum and the staff at Meatball. Find out more about them at theblackstonemeatball.com and find them at 3910 Harney Street in the Blackstone District. Be sure to tune in next time as we explore another great local Omaha restaurant. Till then, I'm Ben Phillips. 
কিবি নম 